All right, we'll just go on while we wait for other people to join us. Um, we'll just go on with the introductions. Good morning, everybody, once again. My name is Adora. I work here at Acrit as a business development officer. Mm, welcome once again to our quarterly webinar series. Um, our topic for today is digital oil field platform for virtual metering, real-time production, optimization, and surveillance. Before we go on, I would just like to give a bit more information about our services here at Acrit. Acrit Energy, formerly Petroleum, is an indigenous petroleum engineering consultancy firm with a specialization in providing a wide range of services to oil, gas, and energy companies. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, our services include development and deployment of software, consultancy, and trainings. For the consultancy arm of our business, we're in partnership with globally recognized companies such as Petroleum Experts, who we partner with on the integrated production modeling tool, um, or SWEET as the case may be, the MOVE suites for geologists and geoscientists, and the digital oil field software. Might I add that the IPM, which is the Integrated Production Modeling Software, is used by over 500 companies worldwide. We also partner with ADEPT Solutions for the development and deployment of AXIS. AXIS is the hydrocarbon accounting software. For our consultancy services, we offer consultancy of for the deployment, pardon me, for the deployment of digital oil fields, our wireless remote field data gathering system. And we also build and support in the building of integrated asset modeling, asset models for different companies and other services that border around the oil, upstream oil and gas business. For our training solutions, they are based on our software. That's our software offerings I mentioned earlier. Petroleum engineering in general and oil and gas business trainings. So today's webinar will be anchored by our very own Stanley Okafo. Stanley is a petroleum engineer here at Acrit. Stanley is well versed in production optimization methods reservoir management, both in the off onshore and offshore fields. Um, I'll just go through the ground rules before we go into the presentation proper. Please mute your mics and turn off your video for a smooth flow. If you have questions, you can drop them in the chat box and at the end of the presentation, Stanley will be sure to attend to all of the questions. Also, we, we will take more questions when the presentation is done. To make the webinar session more engaging and interesting, we'll be sharing polls in between. Please make sure to engage and I hope you have a fantastic time with us. Now I'll hand over to Stanley to take us away. Stanley. Um, good morning, everyone. Ada, please can you confirm that you can hear me? And that you can see my screen. Uh, 
Hello, Ada, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. All right, thank okay. you very okay. much, Ada, for the, um, for the introduction. Um, good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, my name is Stanley Kafo, and I'm a petroleum engineer here at Acris Petroleum. Uh, I will be the major presenter for the rest of the, the technical webinar, um, which is um, titled um, Digital Oil Field, right? a platform for virtual metering, um, real-time production optimization, and surveillance. Right. Um, hopefully, uh, at the end of the presentation, we would um, have a good idea of what a digital oil field system is and how we can use it to achieve a host of field management objectives, um, such as you know, virtual metering, um, real-time optimization of your production system, and monitoring and surveillance. Right. Since um, my colleague has already gone through our services, um, I'm not going to dwell on the services. I'm just going to go into the um, outline for what we have for today. Um, so in the course, of um, this presentation, um, we'll be going through um, these following talking points. Um, first, um, we'll have an introduction to the world of um, digital oil field, um, then what it means and um, what it hopes to achieve. In essence, what the idea of digital oil field is. Um, then we'll look at um, our DOF solution, the solution that we're proposing, um, really to address the digital oil field challenge and um, the different members or components of our solution. And then we'll be looking at um, some objectives, field management objectives that engineers would um, typically want to achieve using the digital oil field system. And then um, we would look at how these objectives can be achieved using um, primarily, primarily three workflows. And then we'll look at a simple um, case study. Um, of a particular deployment we had here in Nigeria. Okay. So um, the digital um, revolution, as it were, that enabled um, the digital food system, the oil and gas industry, um, originated as a result of um, what I like to term um, the dynamism of the oil and gas industry. Um, from my screen you can see a plot just at the left. So the plot is not anything really elaborate. It's just a, a plot showing the um, price variations, right, in crude oil um, for the past 10 years, right? And from this plot, what we can see is that dynamism that I'm talking about, right? So obviously this dynamism that we see in the oil and gas industry um, happens for you know several reasons. Um, it could be things like um, the supply and demand um, that we're very used to. It could also be things like you know geopolitics between um, different countries, right? Um, which also be due to um, let's say some of the activities that maybe some of the major oil and gas companies, oil and gas players, right? Countries usually have in the oil and gas space, right? So all these things can lead to this variation or this dynamism in the oil and gas industry, right? So what happens, right, um, is that when we have periodic dips, for instance, which I try to highlight my screen in the, in the price of oil, we find that um, oil and gas companies that in such periods, um, they have less profits, right? And so uh, due to that reduction in profit, they tend to cut back on expenditure. Right, and the and the consequence of you know that is that there's a reduction in capital projects and uh, reduction in you know new investments. Right, uh, so in these periods, there is always this drive for um, operational efficiency of the existing projects. I'm essentially trying to get the best out of whatever projects are already existing, you know, in the companies, and um, also there's also a drive for um, maintaining. Um, the current infrastructure that assets usually have, right? And that's where um, essentially the companies tend to put their money um, during all these, these periods, right? 
So in trying to meet these objectives, um, fortunately for us in the energy industry, right, there has been so much advancement in technology and um, we're not able to um, digitize our assets, right, to obtain you know, certain information about our assets, about our fields, and then, you know, use this information um, to be able to understand what is basically going on in our assets over time, right? And then that way we're able to, you know, achieve this overall objective of assets maintenance and operational efficiency. And then what companies have also found, right, is that um, whatever efforts, right, that they usually put in place during all these periods where you have, you know, the collapse of the oil price and all, um, should actually be more like a continuous effort, you know, throughout the field life or throughout um, the life of an asset, for instance, um, just to ensure that whatever profits you're getting are actually maximum, right? Um, and then, you know, you have an um, increase in productivity. So, um, the digital transformation, like I mentioned briefly, has shaped the energy industry as we know it, right? And we're now able to create um, virtual representations, right, of our assets and transmit um, the information of what is happening in those assets to locations around the world, right? Even from remote locations, right? Transmit those information to anywhere around the world and in record time as well, right? Also, we now have the ability to analyze all that information we can get from a field in a centralized and um, collaborative environment so that um, whatever decisions that we are taking as engineers, as management, um, can be implemented um, as efficiently as possible, as quickly as possible. Now, obviously, um, in the past, uh, this kind of efficiency I'm talking about was, probably, was actually not possible, right? For the advent of all these, you know, technological advancements that we have these days. Um, so we have advancements in IoT, um, advancements in cloud computing, you know, SCADA systems, um, data science, um, wireless data transmission, uh, and even in data, data um, protection. Um, we can now be um, connected to all our different assets, right? Um, for instance, and we can swiftly make um, operational decisions um, even before windows of opportunities close, right? We can make those decisions. And um, whatever decisions that we are making um, can, can be optimized um, for the overall um, performance of, of our enterprise, right? Business enterprise. Because um, we as engineers, or as management, we have the ability to optimize you know, the different value chains that we have um, for our business. And that way, you know, the overall performance of the enterprise is enhanced. Um, so, in um, summary, as an introduction, um, this digital transformation um, has given birth to the um, digital oil field concept, and it's very beneficial, right, in helping companies achieve, you know, some of their very important objectives, um, like um, driving costs down, right, um, also understanding um, their assets um, via uh, like a timely and accurate information transmission, right? Also, um, it helps with um, improved organizational efficiency, um, also providing um, support for whatever decisions engineers might want to take or management might want to take, and also um, serves as a platform for um, data democratization and integration. Um, which um, goes a long way in um, fostering collaboration between um, different departments or, or in, in a company, for instance, right? So, let's uh, look at um, what the idea is behind our digital airfield deployment, right? So, the idea is to um, basically combine all, all these technology enablers I've talked about in the previous slide in an integrated system, right? To achieve um, the overall objective of um, measurable and sustainable improvements, right, in the field. 
Right, so from um, what we can see on the screen, we can see um, a combination of you know, all the technology we have, IoT, um, real-time information, and being able to acquire real-time information um, from digitized assets, right? Combining all that with um, predefined um, objectives, right, or workflows, and then trying to find a way in which all these objectives can be automated, right? So that, um, you know, whatever results that the engineers or management are interested in seeing, they can see those results in real time, right? So obviously you can see a combination of all these things are actually important as well as a method to be able to visualize these results, right? So the idea is basically just to combine all this, right? So that we can achieve and that measurable and sustained improvements we're talking about, right? So how can we actually um, achieve this measurable and sustain sustainable improvements, right? So the how is by first, um, we need to understand what the field's performance is and uh, how can we do that by continuous monitoring of whatever is going on in the field, right? Um, getting information about the field from different sources, whether it be um, real-time sources or you know, um, production sources or well test sources. So we get all that information, um, use that for surveillance and diagnostics. Right? And then once we're able to get all that information and understand how our field is performing, we now, we're now going to use all that information to try to reproduce the reality of our field. Right, so that simply means create a model of our field. And um, so what we want is that this model uh, should be able to replicate um, all the physical measurements um, that we see in the field, should be able to replicate the past history and then what the current conditions of the field actually is at every point in time, right? So once we have this model, um, we can now have confidence that we have a benchmark of what our production system you know, looks like. And then we can integrate these models with um, whatever continuous data that we have, and then use all that to see how we can improve the performance of our production system, right? By way of optimization or by carrying out um, any field management objectives that might be important to us as engineers. Um, we can also understand how the field will behave under different conditions, right? Um, or how to behave in the future by carrying out different what if scenarios. For instance, we are want to know um, what the performance of our field will be if, let's say, flowing conditions are changing for different wells, or if the well air pressure is changing for different wells. We want to know how the performance of our system will be. So we can carry out what if scenarios um, using the model integrated with data, and then we can also carry out forecasts, uh, which would um, give us an idea of um, how the field will behave over time, right? And the idea is that once we can combine, you know, all these hows, we can derive value, right, from the digital field system, right? So in summary, if we're able to get um, data about from our field, from real-time sources, maybe we instrument our field and we integrate that, um, with a model, and then we automate some of the tasks that we would typically carry out. And once we're able to see those results, we can be able to take um, decisions in real time, right? Which would um, go a long way in improving the operational efficiency of any asset. Okay. So for our digital oil field solution, um, what we have is, is essentially an end-to-end -end solution um, from instrumenting your fields, um, you know, putting gauges at different node points in your field to be able to obtain real-time measurements and to, you know, building the benchmarks, right, the integrated models that um, I said are basically um, the realities of your system um, to also automating all the different um, field management objectives like optimization, right? 
um, surveillance to visualizing the, re the, the results via dashboards or plots. Um, all these different activities, we actually provide all these different activities um, and our solution is essentially um, hinged on the usage of um, the industry standard uh, petroleum experts and digital food suites, um, which we'll look at you know, in more detail as we progress in the presentation. So I'm um, just to go into a little bit more detail about um, the different aspects of the solution we provide first. We'll look at the um, wireless data gathering system, which we deploy, um, which is capable of you know, getting information from our field. So we would have um, installed sensors at different points in our fields, say in our wells or on our wells, flow lines, separators, um, to be able to measure information like, um, say, pressure, um, rates, um, composition of fluids or gas composition. So once we're able to install this, this gadget on your field, then the information that's being you know, recorded by all these instruments are now transmitted wirelessly via a network, right, to some cloud storage or on-premise historian, right, so that um, other layers, other aspects of you know, the overall digital field system can now interact with these databases to basically pick out whatever information that is going to be needed um, to, or different um, calculations, right, or different objectives um, that engineers would have normally done, right? So the next aspect of the solution that we provide is, you know, coming, on, coming up with um, the um, representations of our, our system, right? So obviously, in the overall makeup of the system, the models, um, which I've mentioned earlier, is the benchmark of our understanding, right, of the reality of our system. And these models are very important. Um, so what we have here is a physical model of a production system, which was built using GAP, um, wherein, you know, we have pre-built well and reservoir models, and these um, pre-built well and reservoir models have been tied into a network system of flow lines and um, surface equipment. Um, obviously, once these models are built, all these kinds of models will need to be um, calibrated just to ensure that um, the model can replicate you know, what has happened in the past and also um, the models should be able to capture what is actually going on um, at the current state of the field, right? So once we're able to get these models to be representative, um, the next thing we would now need to worry about, which is in one of the solutions we provide, is about how we can get, um, how we can be able to determine all the different changing conditions in the field, right? at a reasonable frequency, right? So that we will now use that to carry out whatever objectives um, that we need to carry out, right? So once we've instrumented our fields and built our models, um, the next step in the digital field system that we deploy would be to achieve you know, these different objectives, right? So what we want as engineers or what clients would want um, is a system that is um, essentially um, scalable, um, extensible, and upgradable, so that it is um, pretty much adaptable to um, changing workloads, right? Or any changes in technology, for instance, right? Um, and at the heart of the digital e food solution that we provide is this Petex digital e food suite, which is essentially what we want, which is a scalable an extensible and upgradable system um, that gives us a platform for, you know, obtaining real-time digital representation of a system, right, which is, you know, the models, and um, integrating that or on top of those models, introducing some additional layers, right, for 
carrying out the different objectives. So the first layer here is the IFM, which would help us basically summarize any tasks that or workflows, right, that engineers would conventionally perform as part of their duties um, at a particular um, frequency, um, which would typically be in the range of, say, um, for instance, maybe every three months, an engineer might want to carry out a particular task. Um, but with these programmable workflows, which is in the IFM layer of the digital EFX system, um, those activities that are carried out by engineers can essentially be standardized and you know preserved in in these workflows and those tasks can be automated at a particular frequency right if necessary and the final layer which comes into play in this digital field suites is the visualization layer which enables um, the engineer management to be able to see you know whatever results have been calculated so that they can be able to make um so you can have plots data analysis plots in this layer technical plots you can view trends and see overviews of you know what's going on in your well so your overall production system and and, and the likes right and so just to throw um, a little bit more light on how these layers interact to get everything functioning you know, seamlessly, um, we have the functional architecture of you know, the Petex Digital Image Suite. And um, like I said, on top of the IPM model, which is you know, the representation of your field, we have this IFM layer, right? And the IFM layer encompasses um, a model and a file storage system, which is model catalog, um, which enables um, you to be able to manage you know, your model history um, to see if there have been any changes in your model, how the model has evolved over time, you know, who made those changes and all that, right? So this model management system supplies you know, the workflow manager which is essentially the part of the system that helps you execute and schedule your workflows, right? And by the way, your workflows are simply all those tasks, like I said, that the engineers will typically perform, right? And these two elements essentially make, make up this IFM layer. Then the other layer, which is the final layer in the Petex Digital Euclid Suite, you have your real-time data um, coming into what we call a data manager, um, which would really just process um, that data um, into appropriate frequencies, right? Because um, obviously the frequency that the information might be coming in might not be um, the required frequency for carrying out you know, all these different workflows. So it filters that data into appropriate frequencies. And you can see the communication between um, the data manager and the workflow manager. Um, so one once those computations are done using you know, whatever information you have, real-time information, sporadic well test information, and once those computations are done, say every 30 minutes or every one hour, depending on the schedule that you set, the results can now be displayed for you in this final you know, layer, in the visualization part of the layer, right? And you, know, you can easily make whatever analysis that you want to make using those results. Right. So before we go into looking at the different objectives that we can achieve um, using the DOF system, um, like my um, colleague Adora um, pointed out briefly, um, we'll be having some polls, and these polls are essentially just to um, test the understanding of what we've discussed so far, and also to um, make the session more interactive. So I don't know, Adora, can you hear me? Um, can you kindly um, send out yes, the, please. First, you stand the, first, the first two um, questions for the poll? All right. Yeah, so we can just um, take the next maybe 10 to 15 seconds to you know, answer the questions. And then we move on to um, what kind of objectives we can actually carry out using this digital inferior system.
Okay. Seeing the responses. Okay, so the first um, poll says the idea of Dove can be summarized as uh, most people said automation, All right? Um, okay. So um, based on discussions we've had so far, um, so we said that the digital air field system, right? Um, typically includes, you know, you instrumenting your fields to be able to get real-time data and then using that real-time data in combination with your um, models to be able to automate whatever field management tasks that you have and then using analytical tools or analytics tools rather to be able to, you know, look through the results and you know, draw inferences from those results. So um the answer to that should be none uh, because it includes all of them and not just you know one of them okay uh, so um we'll just uh continue with the presentation so like i said Let's look at the objective that we can achieve using the digital airfield system, right? Here are some of the typical objectives. And what we can see is that uh, a combination of whatever data we have, right? The production data, um, sporadic data, real time data. So once we are able to get whatever data we have um, to help us simulate changing conditions of the field, um, within the digital field system. So we tie that with the Petex doc, which essentially includes, you know, your models and then the additional layers we talked about, the IFM and the IVM. And then once you put that in, you should be able to achieve these different objectives, objectives of virtual metering, um, production optimization, um, surveillance, uh, allocation, um task automation and and others right so typically any objectives that the engineer would typically do right can be achieved once you're able to summarize you know the workflows or the processes that the engineer uses to basically carry out this objective right so we're going to be looking at you know just these three, um, which is, you know, the scope of the webinar. We're going to be looking at how this digital airfield system helps us with um, virtual metering, production optimization, and surveillance, right? So these objectives are carried out using workflows, like I briefly mentioned, and in um, a digital airfield deployment, there are over you know 100 out of the box workflows right and all these workflows can be customized to also suit whatever unique processes that clients may have also we can also have new workflows you know, being built right and they are not complex to do they don't require so much you know technical abilities no programming is needed so they are very easy to you know construct from the scratch, right? The first objective that we're going to be looking at is um, how the digital field system helps us with virtual metering, right? And this virtual metering is achieved by um, a workflow in the digital field system we call advanced well surveillance. And the idea of virtual metering is to obtain um, well rates from uh, model-based calculations, right? at a frequency that is you know, much more higher than the rates we will typically get from, say, um, a production report, right? Um, of course, the frequency would, of the results that you get for these rates 
uh, will depend on whatever schedule you set up for the workflow, right? So you can decide to, you know, execute this workflows every 30 minutes, in which case you have about, say, um, 48 rates, right, for a day, or you can schedule it, you know, every one hour, in which case you have 24 rates. And these virtual rates, right, are, are very important, not just as a way to monitor the performance of a well, which we'll see much later, um, but also for technical allocation, right? For helping us to improve things like uh, the quality of production history data, for instance. And um, it also help us with um, surveillance, right? And we'll look at how it helps us with, you know, that these are different activities. So when you have um, multiple sources or rate methods, or so multiple rate methods, for instance, in this screen, you can see VLP IPR, you can see VLP, you can see IPR, you can see choke. So these are different rate methods, right? So once you have these different rate methods, you can easily notice any changes in well behavior, right? From a particular source, for instance, right? Um, for instance, and you can seclude whatever the inputs are into whatever method is, you know, giving you those flags. And then you can use that kind of information to consistently um, sort of query and improve your understanding of how the well is actually performing or your understanding of the well and the field in general, right? So um, the advanced well surveillance workflow that helps us with this virtual metering um, performs several calculations, right? That helps us achieve um, different objectives. So the advanced well surveillance, the first thing that it does is to estimate you know, these virtual rates, right, as I mentioned, right? From different methods, right? VLP, IPR, choke method. In addition to that, one other advantage of having and these high frequency rates is that they can serve as um, an additional data source, right? Like I mentioned briefly for allocation, or uh, um, you know, providing sort of technical allocated volumes, right, for engineers, so that you can use that for things like history matching, right, of your reservoirs. Also, because these different rate methods, you know, since they are different and sort of isolate different parts of the production system. Right, because the IPR, for instance, the IPR rate method deals with just the IPR, right? So since it isolates um, different parts of the production system, we are able to um, leverage on any um, data redundancy, right? To identify when there are changes in our well's behavior, right? Again, if we're able to understand what's going on in our wells, right? For instance, in terms of the behavior, Right, then we are going to be able to diagnose issues such as hydrates, wax formation, bottlenecks, right, in our system. Right. Um, one other issue, one other thing that can be addressed is also the estimation of production conditions, right, in our production system or in our wells, rather, um, which would typically production conditions like um, water cut, for instance, um, GOR. All those kind of information are information you typically typically get from you know routine well tests. They are not information you can easily measure at the field, right? Um, but um, the digital field system and this advanced well surveillance workflow helps us to be able to estimate these production conditions at a very high frequency, and we'll, we'll see how this is achieved. And also because we have a, a wealth of data. We can also continuously um, validate um, a, a well model, right? Using whatever information is coming into um, our digital field system in terms of the real time information or information from our well tests. We can use that to periodically validate um, whatever models we have, right? And we also can also carry out for artificially lifted systems, for instance, can monitor. Um, the performance, right? If it was a gas leaf system, for instance, you can monitor um, what the gas leaf injection rate is over time. You can see how that also affects the production rate over time. So you can do those kind of monitoring activities on the digital system.
is in this advanced or surveillance workshop. Okay. Um, so we can see uh, sorry. Uh, we can see um, that a lot of objectives can be carried out using, um, of course, this advanced world surveillance workflow and the digital ecosystem as a whole. Uh, apart from calculating the risk themselves, there are a whole lot of surveillance activities, uh, both at the well and facility levels. For instance, in this screen that we have here, uh, which has been um, extracted from a demo system, we can see um, on the left, and see some real-time information coming in from uh, our production data management system, um, where we can collect things like wellhead pressure, right? We can collect things like flow line pressure, even a multi-phase flow meter rates. And we can collect all that information, and that information is fed into the advanced well surveillance workflow. And these different rates are calculated, right? These different rate methods are calculated. So if there are any changes in any part of the system, um, those changes will be reflected in, you know, the deviation in the uniformity of these rates, right? Because obviously, um, if we have very functional, up-to-date models, whatever rates we are calculating from these different rate methods should be very close to each other, right? At least they should be within a reasonable um, tolerance, right? So if there's any deviation, we can now you know, isolate um, the areas that are causing that deviation and look at, for instance, things like the input parameters that are taken in that are taken for that particular calculation, right? And that can give us an, some information as to um, some of the uncertainties we might have in our system. Also, we have all these um, estimations of pressure gradients you know, in the wells of production conditions, like I mentioned, um, these are not values you typically have at a very high frequency. You typically have these values from a well test, but um, with the digital airfield system and advanced well surveillance, you're able to um, have estimates of these production conditions at a very high frequency, right? And all that is done um, using um, this auto rate feature. So the auto rate feature, essentially what it does um, for you is that it takes in all the real-time information that you have about your field, and it tries to estimate what it thinks, you know, the current conditions of the field actually is. So based on all the information you have about your field, all the real-time information, the models, it uses some um, regression algorithm to try and say, um, this is what I think um, the water cut, for instance, of this field should be, uh, for you to be able to replicate um, all those real-time measurements, right? Okay. So we have all these estimations. We also have IPR estimations for things like reservoir pressure and PI. Um, of course, reservoir pressure, I, know, I think this, this is not an information you get at a very high frequency as well, but with this system, and the frequency at which you can get you know, estimates of reservoir pressure can be you know, greatly increased. So when you bring um, all this information together, right, it gives you an understanding of your well, right? And that understanding of, let's say, a particular well is reflected in um, what we call key performance indicators, right? This is the summary screen. And we can see um, the KPI here. Right, so the KPI basically tells us, um, based on all the real-time data and everything and all the calculations that are going on, um, this is what we think the level of understanding that you have of this world is, right? So if we had a poor KPI, then um, engineers, as engineers, what we're thinking of, for instance, is how we can you know, get more information to ensure that um, we understand what is going on in this particular world, right? Other things we can see here include things like the flowing status of the well, right? Flowing shutting status, um, which can also be you know, automated from some of the you know, real-time measurements you're getting as well. Can also see things like flow assurance flags, 
right? You can see um, different surveillance plots. Um, we can also trend um, both measured and calculated parameters you know, throughout the system, right? So you can have those trends and compare them so that you can visually inspect some of these changes, right? That might not be apparent from just looking, looking at numbers. Okay, um, here is a plot of um, particular well for a particular period, right? Um, showing um, well head pressure, flow line pressure, manifold pressure. So all these plots have been overlaying together and we can easily see from the plots, we can easily see the changes, right? In these wells operating conditions over, over time, right? So these are some of the things that the star event system can help you. You know, easily see and visualize. Okay. Uh, you can also um, see different results, right, from different analytics and scenarios that have been tested by the system, right? For instance, the auto rate method I explained, uh, what the method does is it actually um, creates different scenarios, right? You have different scenarios in which the um, the auto read feature tries to, you know, come up with what it thinks the, the um, best estimates of the current conditions of the field actually is, but it also gives you um, information like confidence levels, right? All the statistical information so that you can actually know the amount of confidence you can have in some of these calculations that are actually carried out, right? Um, one other important aspect of this multi-rate virtual metering system and uh, surveillance is that you know, we're able to use our models, the models which are the current you know, realities of our systems to sort of validate whatever new well test, for instance, that you have, right? So you can see the status of this new well test here in the screen showing value. So you can use the models to validate whatever well test is coming. And also, you can also um, validate the performance of the model as well using all the real time information or all the production data information or all the sporadic and data information that you have over time. So they work in you know, both ways. Okay. Uh, so the next objective so what, what we've looked at so far is the multi rate. Um, multi-rate virtual metering system, right? That's available in the Patek Digital Air Field um, Suites and um, how that system can be used to achieve, you know, surveillance and uh, um, understanding how, how much rates, you know, are basically achievable from a different world. So this is a different um, objective, uh, which is um, done by different workflow, right? And this workflow helps us with surveillance uh, on a field-wide scale, right? It's called SQC, System Quality Control. Um, before now, we've just been talking about wells, right? So what the SQC workflow does, it is a system um, surveillance workflow that helps us determine uh, the potential of our production system. So we're able to determine um, field rates in real time, right? which is similar to um, performing a network solve for a gap, right? For those that are familiar with gap. Uh, so once we have, you know, the configuration of our network, right? Um, fed into the workflow, right? And things like what are the well statuses and what are, you know, which flow lines are these wells routed through? Which um, facilities are the wells routed to? Once we have all those information about configuration, as well as the boundary conditions of our field, right? Um, a network solve is done, right, by this workflow. And that network solve basically tries to determine um, the rates, right, from the different wells at uh, different points in the system. Um, in addition to the rates, right? Um, Thermodynamic calculations, right, like uh, flash calculations, um, blending cal um, calculations, or when fluid mix, mix, for instance, when two pipelines come together and fluid mix, so those calculations are done as well. 
and other information can be um, important in determining um, things like, um, for instance, um, how does the fluid composition across the entire production system change, right? So that information can be very important for um, process engineers, for instance. Um, so that's one thing we can monitor across the system. And we can also monitor pressures, temperatures, right? Fluid properties, uh, fluid levels uh, and others, right? Also, since we have um, data coming in real time, we can iteratively question our, our model's validity, which I've already thrown some light you know, in the previous slide. And then whatever um, uncertainties that may be causing deviations right, in our model, we can address those uncertainties, right? And also, um, the SQC workflow also carries out um, a host of flow assurance calculations, right? To see if there are issues like wax, or if your pipeline, if there are bottlenecks in your production system, all those kind of flags can actually be given by this particular workflow as well. Okay. Uh, so from this screen, um, we can see, uh, at a glance, we can see a lot of information about the entire field, right? You can see things like, uh, well locations, we can see the statuses of different wells at the bottom, you know, bottom right. Um, we can also see group productions, right? Um, you can group productions based on, for instance, um, production to you know, particular flow stations. So we can, can group that as well. I see group productions. Um, we can also see um, different well rates, right? You can train this rate as well. And um, we can also see the different contributions, right, of these wells to the oil, water, and um, gas productions, right, at every point in time. Okay. Also, um, like I mentioned, to the SQC um, workflow performs some um, flash error calculations, right, and we can see some of the results um, here for you know different pipelines. Right, we can see calculated pressures, upstream pressures and downstream pressures for you know, different pipelines in the system. Um, we can also see different flow assurance flags. Um, we can see flags like uh, stability flags. Uh, we can see bottleneck flags, wax flags, and hybrid flags and all that. We can also go into, if we want to go into more detail of all these flags and is, you know, click at these different um, click on these different um, options to be able to see that as well. Um, also, uh, we can also see um, the field-wide um, pressure and temperature distribution right, at every point in time, uh, which can give us an idea of which headers, for instance, that we want to you know, route setting wells to, right? Um, can give us an idea, right? Which is very important information, right? In things like well routing optimization and you know, that kind of thing. Apart from, okay, apart from knowing the pressure distribution, uh, we can also have information about spare capacities. If we have spare capacities in our system from, you know, um, different separators, different flow stations, um, which is also useful information for water optimization um, that we want to carry out as engineers to be able to know, you know, where to route wells as well and um, how much uh, production or how much constraints we have on a particular um, flow station or separator. That's on how that will impact on the production of our, um, of the different wells routed to that, right? So we can see all that information as well. Okay, so um, the last objective that we're going to be looking at, um, the last and final objective is the optimization objective, uh, which is carried out by a different workflow. And it basically simulates uh, the process of executing a minute solve filling gap. Um, but in this case, 
we are going to be carrying out that network. So using the optimize um, option, right? So obviously, um, we'll be telling the system to feed us with uh, controls, right? Um, that would um, typically maximize production if it's production we're interested in or economics if it's economics we're interested in right of our field under um, defined constraints of say capacity constraints or um, well allowable constraints right or um, constraints for available lift gas so once we're able to constrain the system um, and run this optimization calculation we have those controls and those controls we have them in real time and we can easily implement all those controls before the opportunity windows um, actually closes. Okay, so um, the, this is a screen, um, an optimization screen, the digital field um, system. And basically what this screen is showing us is the difference between um, the current model performance or the current field performance and what we can what we can get, right? The difference between the current conditions and, and what we can get if we apply you know, the controls that the system is proposing, right? So you can see additional oil production, um, reduction in water production if certain controls, for instance, um, choke sizes or um, maybe reallocation of gas lift gas um, volumes to different wells and all that, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's um, those are some of the things that this production optimization uh, workflow helps us achieve. Right. So um, now we've looked at the different objectives. Um, these three different objectives that we can achieve using the digital equipment system. Uh, so next, we're going to be looking at um, some case studies, right, to see. Um, where you know, this technology has been applied and how it has helped them achieve you know, different objectives um, that, that we are required, right? But before we go into any case studies, um, we'll be having another poll just to uh, gauge our understanding, right, of um, the concepts that we've discussed so far. So I don't, Ada, can you still hear me? Uh, can you send yeah, out sure, Sandy. the um, send out the third and fourth um, questions? Okay, so we can as usual we can um, take about um, ten to twenty seconds to answer the questions uh, on the poll. Okay, so there are two polls. Okay. Uh, so the first poll, the question is, uh, um, the knowledge and experience of engineers can be preserved in Digital field system using yeah, so that's workflows. Like I said um, earlier, the workflows are basically enable us to um, you know basically encapsulate whatever objectives that engineers typically carry out on a day to day. Right, once the engineer can basically come up with um, an algorithm or a flow chart that basically summarizes the different steps or processes. And towards achieving whatever task that can be easily designed right in a workflow and you know, that can be used as a standard for whatever um, for whenever those calculations need to be carry out carried out or um, basically just scheduled to you know be carried out at specific times right also the next question digital IP system is useful to um, the answer is all obviously um, I've been you know, going through different aspects of the system and seeing um, cases where it's important for process engineers, where it's important for reservoir engineers, for production engineers, as well for HS engineers and maintenance engineers. So it's 
important for all these different okay so let's continue the presentation uh so we have um we have we have um, several case studies here um, um a number of them are published case studies uh, so i'm not going to really go through um the published case studies but uh um i'm guessing that um, this slide and the video the recording of the video will be available at the end of the presentation so i'll just uh the published case studies and then go into um one of the case studies we had right for a particular field right particular nigerian field right so and this case study was for a field a gas condensate field in nigeria right in which we basically provided them with um, an end-to-end -end solution a digital effect solution. Um, so the field had an overall objective. Um, hello, can you still hear me? Thank you, lost me for a second. Hello, Ada, can you please confirm that you can still hear me? Hello? Hello, Ada, can you confirm that you can still hear me? Okay, if we can continue. Okay, so um, like I was saying, um, we propose that end-to-end -end solution for them to be able to achieve, you know, all these objectives, um, the overall objective, and they had a host of other objectives. Surveillance, uh, optimization, uh, virtual metry, um, allocation, and among others, right? And so the solution that we provided um, was in three phases. Right, first we built an integrated asset model. Um, then we had to you know, design a wireless data gathering system for them, which would enable them, you know. Get real time information. And um, then we now deploy the Dukatex digital airfield suite. Um, right, so um, the first phase for the IAM, um, we built some um, reservoir models for the field using MBAO, um, then matched you know, the performance, the historical data, um, typically um, pressure and community production, right? Then we also built well models for all the wells in Prosper and um, calibrated those well models using um, recent well test information. Um, we then integrated these two as the reservoir and wells with the, the network model, which um, included all the pipeline configurations, the flow stations, and all relevant equipment. Uh, and then calibrated the, you know, integrated model to ensure that um, it was representative of the current reality of their production system. Um, then this integrated asset model was also used to carry out various offline objectives like um, optimization, things like um, well check optimization or routing optimization, because as, as built, the wells could be you know, swung uh, between different facilities or some wells to be swung between different facilities. So things like routing optimization were possible 
Um, we also use the um, IAM for things like steady state uh, flow assurance, determination, um, identification of bottlenecks in the production system, um, forecasts, and other kind of objectives. Then we also went ahead to for the phase two parts where we um, the wireless data gathering system um, in which we deployed um, battery powered cages in our specific locations around the field um, at the wells, um, flow line separators um, to be able to collect information like well head pressure, flow line pressure, separator pressure. Um, and also we set up the system to be able to transmit all that data right to a historian, right? Um, and that historian can trend the data, right? And the data as well can be pulled into the you know, digital field system or digital field suite to be used for um, carrying out all the different um, calculations, right? And the final phase um, of the um, deployment suite, um, which involved you know, configuring some of those off of the shelf workflows that I mentioned earlier, right? Um, to address you know specific needs for the client. So um, we configured the SQC for network rates, um, OPT uh, for system optimization and controls, um, AWS for virtual rates, um, which were used for um, surveillance as well as um, things like um, technical allocation, um, like I mentioned um, earlier. We also have this WTV workflow, which is for well test validation, uh, MWA for allocated rates, right? In addition to um, all these workflows, we also deployed a model and file management system uh, for them to use in efficiently tracking um, changes, right? Made to the models, right? And also a visualization screen uh, so that they'll be able to see whatever results are uh, being you know, carried out by the system, right? So the results um, uh, was an online um, management system, right? Uh, which has, you know, which visualization layer basically looks like something like this um, on the bottom right, right? Uh, so uh, in conclusion, um, the digital field system um, that we deploy is able to help clients to uh, create an online representation of our system, uh, which can be used to achieve all their field management objectives in real time, right? And for uh, clients that already have um, some aspect of the system already in place, for instance, if they already have an IAM, or they really have a telemetry system in place, and we can just come in and integrate all that um, with the remaining aspects of the full digital food experience, right? Which is the Petex of Suite, right? Uh, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you for your audience and participation throughout. If, if there are any questions, uh, we can take them now. Right. And also, while we you know, table our questions, while we table our questions, there will also be a final poll uh, sent out. I think Ada, you can send out the final poll, the final poll just to um, we'll gauge our understanding of uh, what we you know, got from the entire concepts that we've described and we've discussed here today. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can, I think you can raise your hand and also ask. So once you raise your hand, I think we can give you um, the floor to speak. Okay. What are some field management objectives that can be achieved with the adopt offering? So you can just type in your answers or your responses. Okay, if you have any questions, you can also you know, type your questions down and um, we'll address them.
Okay. Um, you can see different responses, performance optimization, uh, production allocation, reservoir management, yeah. Yeah. What responses I can see are, uh, all right. Uh, okay, since I don't think we have any questions, I can see just one question. Um, what solutions would you recommend for a petroleum storage facility? Um, I assume that the question, that the question, I assume you mean like what digital solutions? Can you? Okay. So it's uh it's the same thing. So it depends on so what kind of objectives do you want to um carry out, right? With whatever solution you're looking for. Um so obviously for things like a petroleum storage facility, for instance, um the kind of real-time information you might be interested in might differ from you know the conventional ones I've just mentioned, for instance. So you might be looking at things like uh, maybe what are the fluid levels um, of you know different maybe tanks for instance. Of course, those tanks can be instrumented, and information can still be transmitted in real time. So um, the our digital oil field system is not uh, you know, restricted in such a way that it's just used for a production system. You can actually extend it to um, whatever. Um, systems that you have that basically require um you know this digital um that's this digital need and also um since you're talking about um petroleum storage uh you can also because when when you, when you start talking about storage and um, there's a lot of um accounting right that may come into play so what you can find is that whatever objectives that you set up your digital review system to be able to carry out can be integrated with whatever accounting um, software that you use, right, to be able to you know perform any petroleum accounting um, that you have. And um, one of those solutions is what we actually um, also deploy, which is the Axis Hydrocarbon Accounting Software. Um, which I don't know, which I think um, Ada was kind enough to take us through when she was taking us through some of the services that we um, provide. But really, any digital um, or any digital solution that you need, right? The software that we deploy or the digital information system that we deploy is not really restricted in the sense that it's not you know used for just the production system. I don't know if that addresses the question, but if you have you know. Further clarifications or require more information, you can always reach out to us um, by sending us a mail ltd.com and we'll be happy to um, take the discussion for that. I hope that addresses the question sufficiently. Uh, I guess there are no other questions. All right? Okay, so since there are no other questions, Ada, I think I can hand over to you now.
Okay, thank you very much, Stanley, for the wonderful, wonderful presentation. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We've taken up a bit of your time, and we appreciate that you took the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, the recordings will be available, the recording from this session will be available on our YouTube channel, which I have put in the chat. So you can go on and check out our YouTube channel. You'll find a lot of useful resources that would help you in your work or in your study, as the case may be. Uh, also, we'll send out the slides to every participant as part of our follow-up email. Um, our contact information will also be there if you need to reach out to us for one reason or another. We are always happy to speak to you and to support you in your business endeavors. Once again, thank you so much for joining us and have a lovely rest of the day and weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.